Hello everyone. Thank you for tuning in today. My name is McCade Marshall and this is Word of the Week. Word of the Week is a short video I shoot every single week for my readers and viewers, so thank you for tuning in today. At the end of this video, if you enjoy this message, I encourage you to share it with family, with friends, with loved ones and coworkers. And you can do that by copying the link to this video and pasting it onto, into your email and also onto Facebook, Twitter, and all your favorite social media sites. So make sure to share the good news at the end of this message. Also, I have a YouTube channel at youtube.com that you can subscribe to for all my latest videos. And the channel's just my name, McCade Marshall. And if you'd like to subscribe to receive these Word of the Week videos in your email inbox, you can do so at the end of the message by going to my website, mccademarshall.com. Click on the Word of the Week tab, fill out the form there. I'd be more than happy to add you to my emailing list. So make sure to check that all out at the end of this message. All right, well, the Word of the Week for this week is in remembrance. And before Jesus' final day on earth with his disciples, he taught his followers the importance of keeping his sacrifice on the cross at the forefront of their minds. When Jesus officially ordained communion at the Last Supper, he told his disciples to do this in remembrance of me. Luke chapter 22 verses 19 through 20 says, Jesus took some bread and gave thanks to God for it. Then he broke it in pieces and gave it to the disciples saying, This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took another cup of wine and said, This cup is the new covenant between God and his people an agreement confirmed with my blood, which is poured out as a sacrifice for you. Holy communion is something mandated in scriptures for all believers to take part of. The Bible does not specifically say how often we should take communion, but it does tell us the purpose of communion. Communion is to remind us of the new covenant we are in with God through Jesus Christ. The bread represents Christ's body that was beaten and crushed for our transgressions. The wine represents his blood that was shed for the forgiveness of our sins. Without Jesus sacrificing his life for us, we would have no way to be made right with God. When Jesus died on the cross and rose from the grave, he defeated death for good. What this means is anyone who comes to Christ for salvation, who is in communion with him, has eternal life. When you eat bread during communion, you are displaying an act of worship. You are saying, yes, I belong to the body of Christ. I remember his body that was bruised and beaten for me. When you consume the wine or grape juice, you are acknowledging Christ's blood that was shed for you. You are symbolically eating his flesh and drinking his blood. You are declaring through the act of communion that you belong to him. The attitude you have while taking communion in remembrance of Christ is also very important. When you take communion, do it in full reverence of God. Examine your heart before you partake of Christ's body and his blood. The Apostle Paul warns us not to partake of communion without getting our hearts right with God when he tells the church in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verses 26 through 29. For every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are announcing the Lord's death until he comes again. 
So anyone who eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord unworthily is guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. That is why you should examine yourself before eating the bread and drinking the cup. For if you eat the bread or drink the cup without honoring the body of Christ, you are eating and drinking God's judgment upon yourself. The key to true communion is to honor the body of Christ. The body of Christ is the church and the people in it. If you want to honor God, honor your brothers and sisters in the Lord. Nothing pleases God more than to see his children serving and loving one another as they actively pursue him. While communion is a serious part of worship, it is also meant to be taken joyfully. We celebrate what Christ has done for us. God does not want us only serving him out of fear, but rather out of love. 1 John 4.18 says, There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. I believe even right now, as you keep Christ in remembrance, God is driving out all fear in you. He is replacing that spirit of fear with his unconditional love. The reason you have no need to fear is because the penalty of sin has already been paid for on the cross. You are covered by the blood of Jesus. You are saved. The moment you receive the free gift of Christ's salvation, you no longer have reason to fear God's wrath. The wrath stored up against sin has already fallen on Christ at the cross. This is why we worship God's one and only Son. This is why we take communion in remembrance. We eat the bread and drink the cup in remembrance of all Christ has done for us. The next time the enemy in your thought life tries to tell you to fear God, to run and hide from him when you've messed up or even feel unworthy, you can take that wrong thought captive and remind the devil that you belong to Jesus Christ. Remember, God's love casts out all fear. The Lord is quick to forgive, slow to anger, and is full of compassion and endless love. You have no reason to fear the one who gave his only son up in order for you to have his eternal kingdom. Declare, declare today that you are no longer a slave to fear. Declare you're a child of God. You have communion with him forever because you are in an eternal, unbreakable covenant through Christ's blood. I believe as you serve Christ, honoring him in remembrance, God is going to pour out more of his favor, love, and blessings on your life. You are rising higher, overcoming obstacles, addictions, and wrong thinking because you keep honoring God and doing your best each day. Without Jesus Christ, none of us would have true lasting hope in this world. However, we do have a Savior, and He loved us so much that He was willing to lay down His life and suffer an unjust and brutal death by way of crucifixion. We owe Jesus our lives. We owe him all our affections and attention. So may all we do bring remembrance to the name that is above every other name, whether in heaven or here on earth, that is the name Jesus Christ. Well, I want to pray over you really quick that you'd get this message of in remembrance deep down in your spirit.
And while we may not necessarily take communion every day, the bread and the wine or the grape juice, whatever we do that symbolizes taking in the body and blood of Christ, um, we should do things that point to Jesus, that cause people to remember Jesus, whether that be having a cross as a necklace or talking about the Lord. There's so many different things we can do that point to Jesus as the Savior of the world. So I just want to pray over you really quick that you'd get this message of in remembrance deep into your spirit. So wherever you are, if you want to bow your head, close your eyes and listen along as I pray over this message. Father God, thank you so much for everyone listening and watching right now. I pray, Father, a special blessing, Lord, that people that took time out of their busy weekend to just listen, to hear a word from your scriptures, Father. And you say to take communion in remembrance of you. So I thank you, Lord, that we all have a place of belonging and a sense of purpose because of what Jesus did. He gave up his body. He shed his blood to, so that our sins could be washed away and we can be made right with you. So I just pray a special blessing over everyone listening and watching right now. A healing, a miracle, a breakthrough, Father, in different areas of their life as they set their eyes on you. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I want to tell you the first step to experiencing more of God's goodness is by having a personal relationship with Jesus. If you've never received the free gift of Christ's salvation so that you can inherit eternal life after this lifetime, would you just pray with me this prayer and invite Jesus to come into your heart and be Lord of your life. Wherever you are, if you want to bow your head, close your eyes, and just repeat after me this prayer. Lord Jesus, thank you for coming to die on the cross for my sins. I repent of my sins. Come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. Amen. Well, if you prayed that prayer, the Bible says that you have been spiritually born again and that your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. So welcome to the family of God. And the next step in your faith journey is to get involved in a good Bible-based church and spirit-filled community and let people encourage you along in your walk with God. And be water baptized as a public profession of your faith in Christ. And read your Bible every day. The Bible is the eternal word of God that you can go to at any time to be reminded of the truth of God and to learn more about what God says. And pray. Talk to God like you would your very best friend because God loves you so much. He wants to be in communication and communion with you 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. The Bible says to cast your cares upon the Lord because He cares about you. He cares about everything you're going through. So pray and develop that active prayer life with the Lord. And also, I have a website with a lot of great resources that can help you as well. And the website's just my name, McCadeMarshall.com. And on McCadeMarshall.com, there's other Word of the Week videos just like this one that you can watch. If you'll click on the Word of the Week tab, you can scroll through those videos. There's over 100 different messages. And each message will just uh, inspire you and teach you something just different out of the scriptures. So you can check those videos out. You can watch them with a friend, a spouse, or a loved one, or a co-worker. Um, and also, I'm a writer. And I mail out newsletters for free every three months to my subscriber list. So if you're not on my subscriber list, if you'll click on that newsletters tab on my website, fill out the form there, I'd be more than happy to start mailing you my latest newsletters every three months. And also I've authored a few books that you can order on my website as well. And the latest book I wrote is called Finding Your Keys. And Finding Your Keys has 12 different keys or spiritual truths that you can apply to your life to unlock the supernatural power of God to go to work. So if you don't have Finding Your Keys, it's a great book. It's an easy read. I promise you it'll just empower you to live in a greater way for the Lord. And also another book I wrote that's on my website is called Breathe. And Breathe is all about God breathing new life into your God-given dreams. So if you don't have a copy of Breathe, you can order that as well. And the first book I wrote is called Tasting the Goodness of God. 
And Tasting the Goodness of God is a 31-day daily devotional I wrote to help you learn how to spend time with God each and every day. So if you don't have Finding Your Keys or Breathe or Tasting the Goodness of God, I encourage you to order those books. If you have them, they also make great gifts. So make sure to order those. I'd be more than happy to sign them and ship those books to you. All right. Well, in closing, I just want to declare a special blessing over you. I declare you are set free in the name of Jesus. Every dark force holding you back from your destiny is broken, and you are free to rise higher than ever before. As you honor God, doing things like the worshipful act of communion in remembrance of Christ's sacrifice, God is going to honor you in a special way. Doors that were once closed in your life are now open. The Lord is removing the wrong people in your life and drawing in those who are meant to be there. With God's help, there is nothing you cannot achieve in Jesus' name. Well, I love you and I'm praying for you. God bless you.